so we're gonna start a challenge today it's gonna be something fun actually so first challenge you know first thing we're gonna do we're gonna get some oatmeal with some cow's milk with uh, cinnamon and nutmeg let's eat it carbohydrates are the devil the Satan is taking me away. <laughs> okay. I like getting the milk first. And because this is low sugar, you know, oatmeal. I like to leave the sweet parts and the solid parts for the last. And some, you know, decaf. I do limit caffeine intake, but I do get some caffeine from some. <laughs> Another thing that causes cancer, you know, the milk causes cancer and uh, the diet sodas cause cancer because of the sweeteners. Not really, but anyway, this is a challenge, you know, I'm doing challenges today when it comes to food. That's what I'm doing. Cow's milk, you know, supposed to be so acidic that essentially, you know, it just uh, liquefies your intestines and then you know when you go to the bathroom to do number two they just flow out well, it's actually gonna take some time to eat it so you know because it's gonna get too boring while I eat and the carbs are the devil you know they supposed to mess me up. Let's see. And very little added sugar. You're not supposed to have any added sugar. Zero added sugar. No, not really. You can have some little added sugar a day. I do not believe in any one. One path towards better tomorrow. The straight road towards progress and the sun rising again. I don't believe in those things. I'm ideology free, my friends. Routines and traditions are to be broken and improved. When I catch myself doing something too much and becoming an ideology, I, I take a break from it. So why this? This is essentially a series of challenges because so many different gurus and so many different, uh, you know, diets and methods and they are not effective. I lost 70 pounds and I have kept it off. It took me five years and right now I want to lose the last 10 to 15 pounds. It's going to be the most difficult. But this is essentially to show to you that you do not need to follow any guru diet and the only information that you need on the diet should come from registered dietitians, professionals. That's the only people who know what they're talking about. So people like me People who lost their weight on their own. According to a study, and one study makes no science, because number one, it has to be one study that got peer-reviewed and got mostly positive reviews. 
stood the master of the scientific scrutiny, and then there should be another independent study confirming it. And then it still has to, you know, stand to the master of the scientific scrutiny, and then it becomes science. So this makes no science, of course, but it's promising. And essentially what the studies show that half the people who lose weight and keep it off over five years or longer, guess what? That's the people who do it on their own like me. And the other half, that's all the diets, all the doctors, all the gurus, all the methods combined. So per method, per guru, per diet, that's a pretty low success rate. And yo-yoing is probably part of the reason that when you lose weight over age of 55, 60, you know, you actually live shorter than if you just kept that weight on because people yo-yo too much. And yo-yoing is okay when you're young. It's not going to hurt you. You still have pretty strong body. But when you get old, yo-yoing is really bad for you. So I want to lose my weight before I'm 55. And right now I'm a uh, 47, 48. So. I love oatmeal in the morning. Believe me. Carbs are the devil. They are the devil. I will be dead before I finish. <laughs> One thing about oatmeal. It's actually has some significant amount of uh, of fiber. But we don't call this a high in fiber food, because to me high in fiber, that's more than three grams of fiber per serving. And I'm getting here a double serving. Fiber feeds the healthy bacterial flora in your stomach. That's what it does. It can help you with pooping, but it's not certain. To me, the most important aid in pooping is water. Yeah, fluids. If you drink just uh, two quarts, two and a half quarts of water a day, then you're probably going to have problem going to bathroom, even though it's the minimum for your kidneys to operate properly. You're always going to be freaking constipated. And you're going to be taking laxatives. I would say four quarts a day of water, and then you poop well. Another thing, not eating too many meals a day. Because you want to dump a lot of food at the same time into your digestive tract, just common sense, not science here. And when you drop a lot, he's going to push a lot. So I also have walnuts over here. And I have a whole banana. Who's scared of an entire banana a day? Come on. There must be some people who scared I'm a whole banana. I'm a whole banana.
my wife had a bariatric surgery, which saved her life. However, afterward, the bariatric surgeon sent her, you know, to which he belongs, to which he goes. Uh, the commercial was saying that you cannot have a whole banana because it's too many carbohydrates for a person after bariatric surgery. So essentially they push in high protein diet like crazy. That's what they that's what they peddle. Oh now I got some not so savory pieces of the banana off. I don't like eating things that I do not know. I'm a kind of careful eater. If I see something wrong, a little, I just uh, don't eat that part of the food. So let's say, uh, that's pretty much whole banana. 99, 98% of it. Challenge accepted. And one thing. Banana tastes best when you split it three ways. Mm. Delicious. Delicious, my friends. So first challenge, carbohydrates and milk. Second challenge, a whole banana. And now they say that uh, you cannot, you're supposed to have some vegans say that you're supposed to have only this, this little of freaking walnuts. So let eat this little of walnuts and then some. They're, you know, high carb, low fat, extreme low fat vegans. Not all vegans are crazy, but some are. Mm -hmm. That was like five halves. I usually eat ten halves. Mm, delicious. This is good. Well, oatmeal, banana, walnuts. According to some vegans, it's too much fat in these walnuts. So, my breakfast is pretty much 800 calories. Nice decaf with some little creamer. So I'm gonna be back with some berries for my lunch, berries and chocolate. Add that sugar in dark chocolate that is only 40% cacao. <gasps> Horrible. And then I'm gonna come back with another challenge later on. For uh, dinner, I'm gonna eat bean soup. You know, Dr. Gundry? Yeah. Beans, the leaky gut syndrome. Terrible. Terrible, terrible things, man. I'm gonna do to my body today, as I did before. The animal. I think 
by 7 p.m. I'm gonna be dead. All those carbohydrates I ate, that entire banana, the added sugar in the oatmeal, you know, and all that fat in the walnuts. That shit gonna kill me. But I'm gonna be back. For now, I'm gonna pause this recording. So I'm gonna eat some blueberries and blackberries for fiber. Oh my god, it's even more carbs. It's horrible. Oh my god, he's eating fruit. Not so much sugar. Challenge accepted. I don't wear shirt because if I wear shirt, guess what? Can get dirty from the fruit juice. Why to wear shirt? Decaf. Mm. It's my freaking lunch. Freaking chocolate, dark chocolate, but probably 40% cacao. So, extra. <gasps> oh my god, added sugar. Uh. Like Greg Doucet would say. Mm. You eat all that freaking fruit, all that added sugar. 
You look like shit, like everybody else. I don't care. I don't care about perfection. Actually, I'm not against achieving perfection, but it has to be a slow, relatively painless process. I need to lose weight. Why did I lose weight? Because I loved my body. I learned something. When you punish your body for not being the way that you would like it to, then it's punishment. Then you hate your body. Then eventually you end up hurting your body. When you love your body, it's counterintuitive, of course. It's kind of almost scientific because science, by principle, is counterintuitive. When you love your body, you're going to reward your, reward your body with continuously better diet and exercise. It's pretty much what I think. It's counterintuitive, but it makes sense. So I see you at dinner. Dinner is here. Time for the bean soup. In the meantime, I ate some little whipped cream and some little biscuits. So uh, with dinner, I estimate this bean soup gonna be like 600 calories and before it 1300, so it's gonna be 1900 calories together. So Dr. Gundry, I accept your challenge. I, my wife did not pressure cook these beans. She just cooked them regular. My God, gonna be leaky, so leaky. You know, it's gonna be all over the floor, just gonna be liquefied. What Dr. Gundry is saying is essentially he makes money of a vast exaggeration. You know, leaky gut is actually possibly a thing, possibly not. Or maybe just for some people. It's not certain if it even exists. In addition, what he's saying applies only for, to people with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, which is pretty much all the things that can go wrong with your digestive system put together you know when it comes to interaction with food except for uh, celiac celiac is different it's autoimmune disease actually uh, and uh, it's uh, it's not allergy and uh, you know the thing is that why he says plant paradox why does he say it because he want to excuse a reality reality is that you know, if you have magical genes, great DNA, and you're going to live to 100, that's okay. But majority of people won't. So what you try to look, you look for a diet that, you know, helps populations of people achieve old average age. You know, high average age, higher than other populations. Like people in Sardinia, or people in, uh, you know, Okinawa. And in Okinawa, yes, people during 1940s and 50s ate a lot of fish because pigs were slaughtered for the Japanese Imperial Army. Well, then the staple became again, you know, pork. I guess what happened? Nothing. Even though they ate a little pork almost every day, nothing happened to them. They stopped eating a lot of fish. So fish is not really that crucial. Yes, fish is good for you, and uh, except for one blue zone when people live a long time when populations live a long time not individuals you know it's eaten all over the place however it's not necessary so what's necessary one of the necessary things seems to be lentils legumes beans you know so uh take that into consideration empirical evidence not necessarily lab evidence. Because well, lab evidence is not everything. If it makes me live longer, why do? how do I care how it does it? It's kind of like um, up in the lore of running by Dr. Noakes, where he talks about lactic threshold not being really lactic threshold, but still, if you do it in training, it still works and it makes you run better. 
So it's kind of difference that makes no difference, except if you're a scientist. So it's some tomato, and to be secret to tomatoes being good for you, not bad for you, is what people do who eat a lot of tomatoes with them. As a kid, I used to, I used to eat tomato as a hand fruit or hand vegetable in, back in Poland. But I think that's wrong. I think you should never eat fresh tomatoes. You should always eat only cooked tomatoes. I know I'm not a vegetarian, but I try to eat at least twice a week vegetarian. And yes, if in the future we have meat from a laboratory, from a lab, and uh, you know, from a sanctuary factory, and if this meat tastes good and it's good, I don't have to eat animals. I can eat mass-produced meat in a factory. I don't have problem with it. But I sincerely believe that when you should we all be essentially a vegan and if they can make a cow's milk in a factory, I also gonna get it from a factory. But I believe when we shouldn't ordinarily kill animals, guess what? I believe that once a year, every person should be required to kill an animal, skin it on his or her own or a their own and then cook it and eat it why in the case of emergency but that's it otherwise we should leave animals alone and i believe that we can start by making certain animals of limits certain really intelligent animals that seem to be pretty sentient certain you know members of the corvid raven magpie family most especially eurasian magpie certain other animals and even porsche the spider you know we should try not to kill it i mean there shouldn't be any law against it but we should tell kids listen you know, for something with such a little brain, it's so smart. Maybe it's better if it stays around. Nineteen hundred calories that leaves the room for the dessert. <laughs> you know what? I don't care if my videos go popular. When I do these videos, I feel more obligated not to overeat so i'm definitely gonna keep on making these videos And I do have, you know, acid reflux. Since I'm getting medication today, I'm going back to the intermittent fasting. And actually, a form of intermittent fasting. Which I don't do religiously. As I told you, I don't believe in any ideology. So on Fridays, I'm going to have my pig out date, which may move. This week, it was yesterday on Thursday. So I'm not doing Friday. This Today is Friday. So on Friday or Thursday, whichever going to be the pig out date or Saturday or Sunday, 
But anyway, whatever gonna be the pickout date for the week, I'm not doing real intermittent fasting. But I notice once I got myself used to doing intermittent fasting between 5 p.m. and 9 a.m., guess what happens? Even if I do not try to do the restricted time eating, a type of intermittent fasting, I still inadvertently do it. I still do 12 hours in between, in between meals. This is really good. It's mostly beans. Also tomato paste. Some green beans. I do get it. I do get it. You know, and I wouldn't... One thing. To me it's a... Looking at the wrong data i noticed that mike the vegan and a man who actually eats meat have a discussion about that you know people who live over 90 which pretty much takes quote unquote magic genetics that's how it is you know that you know, most of them, not majority, but most, have uh, cholesterol levels over 150. You know, how does it apply to you? Do you have magic, quote unquote, genetics? Probably not. Nine out of ten, you don't. So, what I rather look at is the populations, like Sardinia or like Okinawa. And right now Okinawa is messed up because since 1980s they started to get sick because of the fast food restaurants opening all over the place. But let's look at the average cholesterol data if such data exists for them from before 1980s. And then we can settle this case. But one thing for sure, doctors love to exaggerate. So there's only scientific evidence So, uh, for example, the science says that your total cholesterol should be under 150. Okay, and it's perfect, according to science, scientific, scientific consensus at least, at the present, can change in future. Guess what? If you had a heart attack stroke, the doctors want you to go under 100. There is absolutely no scientific reason whatsoever. That's the problem with medicine. Medicine is an intuitive application of counterintuitive science, which sometimes defeats the purpose. That's what it is. You can quote me on that. Anyway, you can quote me on that. But anyway, you know, uh, hey, you know, little hot chocolate with a touch of nutmeg and cinnamon for the dessert, little freaking, little uh, sugar-free ice cream, no sugar added ice cream, and of course, decaf. Yeah. There's no challenges here. If you eat ice cream, you cannot look good in all those things. You know? well, and that's gonna be 200 calories. I also ate a little, couldn't stop myself, I ate a little walnuts with 50 calories, so 250 plus 150 in hot chocolate. 
so that's gonna be 400 1900 plus 400 2300 plus I'm gonna do exercise today I'm gonna burn at least 600 calories during exercise okay so and then I'm gonna finish with 100 calories I'm gonna do restricted restricted time feeding fasting restricted time feeding actually type of uh, um, intermittent fasting but it's not gonna be extreme I'm gonna finish at 7 because that's when I'm gonna start to exercise and I'm gonna have a piece of candy because my exercise doesn't last more last more than an hour total and no more than 45 minutes under stress you know do an effort and at least 15 minutes of breaks in between so uh, that's gonna be beneficial for my cardio part for my running part because it's gonna give me a little sugar rush which should make it much easier to exercise I don't need it forever it's gonna be tiny sugar rush though it's gonna be one piece of candy chocolate candy so uh, I like the ice cream it's a butter pecan very nice I don't understand it why you only can get brayers or uh, you know in bars either brayers or in bars at the local shop right when it comes to no sugar added ice creams why the other brands don't make them so what about milk oh milk is not for everyone i mean kind of fish but uh, if you are a woman cow's milk is okay for you soy is okay for you the cow's milk is okay for you too i'm not a doctor i'm not a dietitian i'm not a registered dietitian or anything like this but hey that's my opinion from what i gather from people and from science if you are male though you should be careful if you are male like me who you know has multiple copies of a gene for lactose persistence as adult then as long as I do not drink more than half a gallon of milk a day I'm good however if you are majority of male of human male population on earth as an, if you're over five years of age you should not use cow's milk because it gonna increase your odds of prostate cancer it's that simple you should get milk analogs soy milk rice milk whatever almond milk but you should not or drink not don't drink any milk at all period But you know, pretty much all women are okay with drinking cow's milk and soy. Anybody can eat soy unless you have soy allergy. I do like tofu. Now freaking decaf. final product of the day cocoa hot chocolate with just a touch little touch of nutmeg and uh, and cinnamon yeah and uh, everybody wanted uh, the cinnamon cinnamon and all those things and then they get disappointed 
majority of people find the original cinnamon to be too strong. Two things about eating. Certain things defeat the purpose. I remember my friend telling me that he wanted to make a lamb and a secret to make a lamb easy way to taste good is to marinate it, infuse it with garlic and ginger. That's the easiest way to do it. You can do it otherwise, but that's the easiest way. That's the simplest way. Not Michelin star chef like Chef Ramsay, just simple way. And then, you know, my friend told me, make a lamb that doesn't taste like lamb. And I was like, what's the kind of point that defeats the purpose? Then he told me, I'm going to make you catfish. And I replied to him, if you can make me a catfish that doesn't taste like catfish, I eat it. And he told me, what the, it defeats the purpose. However, it doesn't mean we cannot change. People who go to live in China, for example, it takes them half a year, but after half a year, they get used to soy milk. Uh, similarly, I did do some little thing to myself. I decided to test myself. So uh, when I was going to school, I decided that once a week, I'm going to get my meal from a food truck. And I decided that I'm going to get myself used to beef bacon. And I did successfully. Initially, it didn't taste good. I had to force myself. But eventually, after a few weeks, I was craving the beef bacon. Right now, when I tried it, it tasted not good. Believe me. It's an acquired taste. Come on, misconception. Uh, Mr. Sliwa, which actually in Polish is Sliwa, and it means plum. It means plum tree. Plum tree. And uh, guess what? He said that Polish families love goose. Patently untrue. Polish families relied on goose for the source of protein because they were poor. What Polish families loved, always loved, was duck. A duck stuffed with a veal and an egg. Kid you not. So anyway, it's uh, pretty much the end of this video. And today I'm going to finish eating by 7 o'clock. I'm still going to have one small piece of candy. Chocolate candy, Polish candy. You know, to get me moving when I'm going to be running. So uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, stay healthy, my friends. Uh, have a good day and uh, subscribe if you want to. I want to make more of these videos, whether you subscribe or not, because they seem to motivate me not to overeat. So I'm doing it for myself. However, if you benefit from it in certain form or shape, please keep on watching, subscribing and giving me plus, 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 plus. Have a great day.